Hey everyone, welcome to this special bonus video for Maniac Mansion. I just wanted to show a couple of the easter eggs, I'm just going to show a few. And then I had a viewer request to go ahead and show something that I didn't show in my two playthroughs of Maniac Mansion. First off, in the pool area, I told you not to press the red button, well, let's go ahead and press that red button. After doing so, you will quickly see the house explode into a glorious display of nuclear disaster. Now there are several ways to make the house explode just exactly like that. You can also turn off the circuit breaker in the house and leave it off for an extended amount of time causing the house to melt down and explode. You can also go ahead and just let the house self-destruct once Dr. Fred has set the self-destruction mode when you enter the lab or when the meteor has gone ahead and set the self-destruction once you've turned off his machine. Okay, so now I'm going to show you my two personal favorite of the single character deaths in the game. What you need for this death is to have the glass jar. That's all you need to have. Go ahead, use the glass jar in the swimming pool. It will fill with the radioactive water. Then you want to go ahead and head back to the kitchen area. Once you're back in the kitchen, you want to go ahead and use that glass jar that we just filled with that radioactive water. Open up the microwave first, use the glass jar inside that microwave, and then turn the microwave on. By doing so, the steam that will be formed from that glass jar will be radioactive. So if you go ahead and open up the microwave afterwards, Radioactive steam will pop out, causing your character to do a hilarious dance, and then die. The second of my two favorite deaths is probably a no-brainer. It's probably the most famous easter egg of any NES game that's probably ever come out. Okay, now this is probably the most famous death of all. We're gonna go ahead and explode the hamster. Once you have Weird Ed's pet hamster, you want to go ahead and put it in the microwave, and then you want to go ahead and turn on the microwave. After a few seconds, the hamster will unfortunately, for it at least, explode into a puddle of fur and mess. You want to go ahead and grab that hamster that's now exploded, and now will be called exploded hams in your inventory. Which I think is still probably one of the funniest names for any item. Despite the fact that you just exploded the hamster, it's now named Exploding Hams in your inventory. Once you've gone ahead and done that, and if PETA is not knocking down your door at this very moment, you want to go ahead and head up to Weird Ed's room, where we will give him back his exploded hams. Once inside Weird Ed's room, of course he's going to come after you. You want to go ahead and select the exploded hams in your inventory and go ahead and give it to him. Now those are just some of the ways to go ahead and kill off all your characters in Maniac Mansion. There's also a few other ways that I didn't showcase. Uh, however, I'm going to go ahead now and show something in the game that I didn't do in either one of my playthroughs, yet I did have a request to do so. And that is fixing the arcade machines so that you can get the real password for the inner door of the lab. Like I did in both of my playthroughs, if you don't see the arcade scene with Dr. Fred, the inner door password is just four zeros. However, if you get a cutscene where he plays the arcade machine, which is what you're officially supposed to do, you use his high score as the inner door code in order to enter the lab. Now, in order to do this, you do need a few items. Number one, you need the toolbox from the garage. 
which you can get to outside in the pool area, but you need to use the Hunkomatic machine in order to lift up the garage door. Once you've lifted up the garage door, use the yellow key that we got from the room with the green tentacle on the trunk and get the toolbox. You also need to grab the flashlight, which is located in the kitchen, and then you need batteries. The old batteries in the refrigerator will not work. You need to get the batteries from the radio, which is located inside the pool. Once you've drained the pool to get the glowing key, there's also a radio sitting there in a chair. Grab the radio, open it up, and you get batteries. Put the batteries in the flashlight, and you have a working flashlight. You also need the paint remover, which I picked up in both of my runs of the game, but didn't use. Okay, with those items, you want to go ahead and go into this room, which is located on the top floor. Use the paint remover on that wall right there where the ladder is. It's usually just a painted over wall. Now see that gap in the wires there? That's what we're going to be fixing. However, we can't fix it until the power's out. So right now I'm going ahead to use my batteries in my flashlight so I have a working flashlight. I already have a character set up inside the circuit breaker room. Once here, you want to go ahead and open up the circuit breaker. And then turn off the circuit breaker. By doing so, all the power in the house will turn off. However, if it's left off for too long, it's going to cause a meltdown. You're going to get a cutscene of the purple tentacle and Dr. Fred yammering back and forth that the power has been turned off and there's going to be a meltdown if it's not fixed. However, the purple tentacle is not going to fix the circuit breaker and turn it back on, especially since the character is standing right there. He's just going to find that character and most likely throw him in the prison area, so be prepared to have one of your characters thrown in there. Or if you wanted to, once you had turned off the circuit breaker, quickly escape that room if possible to try to avoid being caught. Now you do have to be pretty quick about this because the house will explode if you're uh, not very fast about it. However, once the cutscene ends, you'll go back to your character, it's complete pitch black. You want to go ahead and turn on your flashlight. Once that's on, you have a little gray box, which is the flashlight, and then you want to go ahead and use the toolbox on that broken piece of wiring. Once you've done so, the wires are fixed, and now you're going to go ahead and turn back on the circuit breaker. You can either have moved this character out of the way, out of the room, and then moved him right back in and turn it on, or the character that I'm using the flashlight with, I'm going to run down real quick and turn back on the circuit breaker. Now once you have restored power to the house and prevented the meltdown, after a few minutes or so, you will see a cutscene of Dr. Fred playing the arcade machine. Once you have seen that scene, you can now go into the arcade, put your quarter in the machine to turn it on, and you'll see the high score. To get the quarter is a pretty long process. You had to collect dimes from different parts of the house, either the one you saw in the Green Tentacles bedroom, or go ahead and open up Weird Ed's piggy bank, take out the dimes. Then you need to go ahead and use the telescope, which costs a few dimes to use. You have to zoom in on a small bit of note near the safe in Nurse Edna's bedroom. Then you need to distract Nurse Edna so that you can get into her bedroom to get to the safe. To do so, you need to replace the water faucet in the bathroom. And then you need to turn it on, which will move the mummified dead corpse of the cousin Ted. And will also give you the phone number for Nurse Edna. Now you need to fix the phone with one of the few characters you can, mainly Bernard. Then call Nurse Edna using that number. She'll be distracted. She'll leave the room. You can go in there, go up, use the combination on the wall safe, and get the envelope. Then you need to fill the glass jar with real water, which you can use the kitchen sink for. Put that along with the envelope into the microwave. Turn it on. You'll be able to open up the envelope. As well, be able to reuse the envelope for one of the endings. You'll get the quarter from the envelope, and then you can go up to the arcade. Once you are in the arcade area, go ahead and go inside. Then go ahead and use the quarter that we got from the envelope on the Meteor Mess game. Once you've done so, it'll turn on, and it will play a little Nintendo song. You will then see the high score list. His initials are DFS, and you can see that 3301 is his high score, which you can then use on the inner lab door in order to get inside and finish the game. Okay, so I'd like to thank EquinoxFan82 for that request to go ahead and showcase uh, how to actually fix the arcade machines. I hope that helped you out in seeing that. I know I didn't show everything that I mentioned and how to do all of it. I'm sure there's at least some guide out there that has a better description written on that whole ordeal on how to get the arcades uh, working again. 
Okay, so I have about a minute left, so I'll go ahead and wrap up this bonus video. Starting on Monday is the March of Mega Man 2. I hope you've been looking forward to it. This is one of my favorite things to do every year. Last year I did the first four Mega Man games on the NES, and this year I'm doing Mega Man 5, Mega Man 6, Mega Man 7, and Mega Man 8. There will be complete playthroughs as well as game music appreciation theaters for all the games. I also want to thank everyone out there who has subscribed to my videos, has commented, watches them all, sends me messages. Whatever you do, if you just click on the video and click off of it, doesn't matter. Thanks for watching. I now have over 800 subscribers, which is a little unreal to think of. So anyway, thanks to everyone, whether you hate my videos or love them. I hope you continue to watch, and of course, I hope you continue to enjoy.